Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Another episode of Project One Ton. Got some more parts ready for paint, so stick around. All right, now let me catch you up on some of the things that has happened. I did manage to tie in that front door post on both sides without taking the doors off. I ended up having to put three small pieces in. I had to put a plate here, put this radius piece in here, and then a piece on the back side above the end cap. And uh, I welded it up um, using a new weld gun that I, I got for the welder so that I could get in there. And I'll, I'll give you a little shot of that here in just a second. So this is the weld gun that I'm talking about. Uh, it's much smaller, much more compact than the original. And it was pretty cheap. It was pretty cheap. Uh, it's still 150 amps, and uh, the welder's 145, so it's right on the money as far as functionality. But that got into some really, really tight areas for me. And uh, in order to grind that up, you couldn't get in there with a typical roll lock or flap disc. It's just too tight an area. Uh, I ended up dressing the welds by putting a carbide cutter. A uh, little die grinder, uh, chewing that all off, skim of uh, ABC glass plus, and some body filler, and I just uh, just rough rough body worked it. It's it's hidden down there behind this door. I'm sure it'll be fine no matter what it looks like after paint. Now back here, the door post back here, done some extensive work back here, got that all cleaned up. Uh, it's got a guide coat on it ready to be blocked down okay and the back here the back section here if you're calling the video I pulled the major dent out of the back of this cab and after I recorded that I went ahead filled in the um, the holes with weld quick little bit of body filler blocked it up um, shot it with uh, epoxy primer a uh, couple coats of base couple coats of clear called it a day just the back of the cab all you will ever see back here once the uh, once the bed is on is about this much of the top of this and also going to paint this back door on the inside and the out if you recall in a previous video this was all full of dents uh, all cleaned up uh, I ended up taking this back off the truck um, Again, cleaning it up one more time and getting uh, epoxy uh, primer on it and some high build primer, that good old Dominion Sure Seal. Got to get some of the seals off of it and some plastic bits, uh, uh, wash it, get a guide coat on it, and get this block sanded as well. Alright, so I got the hardware off and the weather stripping off. Uh, this uh, there was a lot of grease in along the lip here on the bottom side because this door this door been undercoated really well and that undercoating oil had seeped out the bottom and of course dirt you know made a cake on there had to get that uh, cleaned up with some lacquer thinner uh, now I put the door panel just rested it on top here just to show you guys there's not a whole lot of paint work to be done just around through here and across the top uh, around the window opening is pretty much pretty much it as far as paint work on the back side here so I'm thinking most of this isn't seen this isn't seen it's facing the ground but around here you do see uh, but you only see it when the door is actually uh, open and you're getting out of the vehicle So just gonna scuff this with 320 clean up a couple of these chips and then spray a couple coats of base and Probably only one good wet coat of clear and that'll do for the backside Got the door flipped over backside is prepped ready for paint um, saw a few imperfections, threw some red glaze in there, uh, sprayed it with a guide coat, you know, just cheap, flat black aerosol, 
Got some 400 wet here, dual density block, water. I'm gonna get wet sand in this down and get it ready for paint. Now, if I didn't mention it already, the plan here is prep this door on both sides, paint the back side of the door, and while that's curing up for a couple of days, finish off the cab on this side, and then come back and paint the top side of this door and put it all back together. guys so hope you can see this I got this whole center section sanded down and dried off and I'm gonna share this with you you can still see some imperfections right here and over here there's some deeper scratches and an actual a little pit mark uh, right here but I've gone down to the metal I can't go any further so the best thing to do when you get to this point uh, is identify that these areas are too low uh, to sand out. Like over here, I can see um, I'm getting too low. There's some shadows forming from the work underneath. Get out the red glaze, touch that up, uh, continue to block out another area while that dries, come back and uh, and touch that up and it'll be fine because I'm gonna put sealer over top of this okay now if you weren't you'd have to do a spot prime and block it again now all the flatter bigger areas all done got a couple touch-ups down there not a big deal uh, but all these little fiddly areas like here wrap the paper in some scotch bright and get down in these crevices uh, without leaving a big finger lines it should sand out pretty smooth now over here got a blend out of this edge on the primer along here all this rest of this black area just gonna get scuffed now all sanded down I've got one two three little spots to finish up everything else uh, I think is ready so um, it just needs uh, a wash after I clean those spots up some soap and water uh, get it dried off flipped over and into the garage so probably in the next clip be ready to paint the backside okay guys all wiped down with wax and grease remover sealer in the gun ready to go That one nice wet coat of sealer on there and if you notice I sprayed along under the edge because that's all prepped I want the base and the clear to wrap the edge so that when I uh, flip this over I can come sand that edge back out and then I can paint uh, paint right to it without uh, any issues sealer is uh 
cured up here for like uh, 20 minutes. Got base coat in the Iwata Bell area. Uh, just to put down two coats. Okay, so two coats of the base. Everything looks like it's covered. It's hard to get a shot. I had to put the door down a little so I'm not screwing the lighting up, of course. Uh, I got uh, clear mixed up in the gun. And I think this, since it's only the uh, inside side, this probably only needs one nice uh, wet coat of clear. Because I'm going to show you something uh, when my wife gets home uh, with her vehicle. Alright guys, time to clean up the gun. Looking good. Now that's just one. See if I can get out of the light here. That's a little better. That's just one wet coat of clear. Okay guys, this is what I was getting at. This is a brand new 2021 Kia Sorento. The clear comes to here, but it is not cleared inside of the hatch opening or the underside uh, of the hatch at all and now I have the hood open as well and uh, the underside of the hood isn't done either or the engine compartment and right, guys working on prepping this cab the post same treatment as the door wet sanded with 400 the black portion around the door opening here um, scuffed with 220 followed by red scotch bright uh, the sill just had a light coat of the Transtar 2 and 1 on it uh, it's preserved the work pretty good here for the last uh, month and a half. So it just got hit with red scotch bright. Now the plan for paint is uh, 
coat this rocker in a, in a coat of epoxy, uh, followed by stone guard. Probably going to come follow this line here through and out. Uh, a little seam sealer in here. Then uh, spray sealer everywhere sealer needs to be. Base and clear. I think we're ready to go here. Everything's all wiped off. You see the door openings taped in. Back windows covered. Got the old blanket tech going on here on the front and back windows. Garbage bag tech going on on the side window. Don't have to worry about the hood. Don't have to worry about the fenders. They're already, uh, one fender's already painted and the hood's already painted. So I don't care about overspray on that, but I do care about overspray. Sorry, overspray on the glass. Now I'm only concerned about getting into about here uh, with my color coat uh, because eventually fenders got to come off, doors got to come off, and at that point I just run a false edge and finish that up. So I got the epoxy all mixed up. No point in waiting. Spray it. Okay, got the epoxy applied. Uh, it was a little thick for that uh, 1.3. I should have thinned it down a little bit more. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, give this uh, some time to dry, like probably at least a half hour before I put tape line across here. Uh, corner taped in. Uh, looks kind of straight. Straight enough. I had to put a, put a piece of fine line up. Couldn't get around the corner and keep the line straight. Uh, gonna put on some uh, rocker guard and I got cardboard here. Kind of protect that latch a little bit and I spray along.
Huh? Gravel guard applied. It's just a thin coat, just to give a little uh, extra protection. Okay. Now let that cure for a good hour. It dried out. Spray some sealer. Yeah. Sealer's down. Give that about 20 minutes. Shoot some base.
Okay. First coat of base. Not too bad, not too shabby. Uh, got some good coverage. Um, had to fight with this breeze the whole time. That's why I kind of did in the back here first. Not too bad. I give that uh, 10 minutes. Give her another coat. Now that's two coats of base on the jams. Hope you guys can see. Uh, three coats on the rocker. And the pillar. Give that a bit of time. Get some clear ready. Now, you guys might be wondering what I was fooling around with with the tape over here. I got this peeled back now. Uh, what I'm going to do, I had this back mast, okay? So the sealer blew under, peeled off a, a false edge, and then um, the base is now over to here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scuff this with some thousand grit just along the edge here. And then hopefully the clear uh, will then land here on the edge of the tape. And then I'll have a little spot I can polish. So it's a seamless blend. Because remember I said this little bit is the visible bit. Sorry about that guys. I got started without you. Forgot to hit the button. Now, nah, I decided, you know what, two wet coats on everything. I think that's going to be good enough for me. It's flowing out really nice. I mean, I think it's on, on there thick enough. I can, I can do a polish. So the only thing I have left to do, peel this tape back, spray a little reducer on there. Stand here for 20 minutes, making sure no bugs fly in it. Now, I had to stand here for like 45 minutes. Make sure a bee or a fly, you know, like that guy right there. Or possibly even, you know, I'm not kidding you, within 10 feet of this truck, dandelion fluff, like, everywhere. And, yeah, so I stood guard over it for 45 minutes, made sure nothing got in it until it was tack free. Now, here's the line I was talking about earlier. Uh, I ended up not not spraying this with uh reducer i think i'll be able to polish that little tiny line out because remember uh me saying the bed is only going to expose this much okay so that little tiny bit polish that out sometime maybe even next year i don't know but uh everything else is unmasked 
and it looks exactly as I expected it to. A nice, uh, a rough texture along here and a very nice, uh, a very nice gloss finish on the door post. So now that done, move back onto the door in there and get the top side painted. Uh, this has had a day and a half to cure. So I got it flipped over here now. Uh, and I have to give this another quick wet sand with 400 because I got all this spray up around here. And then uh, down the other side here, I'll just gray scotch right down here tape in that post tape in that handle uh, now i did get a little bit of overspray on this because i forgot to tape it so i just cleaned that off with some lacquer thinner i said tape that up and then uh had a little little something happen there uh yesterday afternoon so take a quick peek outside at the cab and we'll have to catch up uh catch up to that later once it gets a little brighter out but um, I got this all painted, if you recall, that was yesterday's part of the video, and, uh, late in the afternoon, started to sprinkle rain, so I covered it in with some, some painter's plastic, and then it rained off and on all night, so we're gonna have a look and see what happened to the clear coat after that little rainstorm. Like I said, once it gets a little brighter out. Okay, so the door is all sanded. 400. Uh, like I said, scotch brighted over here. It's all taped in. I got a little relief going around the edge here. This is just a keep spray from flying under the door onto the... The, the painted surface there even though it's it's it really doesn't matter that much uh, but it will, should end up with a nice a nice edge along here now the only hold up I'm having is right over here on the portable workbench and that's the thermometer temperature is nice 65 degrees humidity pushing almost a hundred percent so gonna have to wait for the humidity to drop before I can start painting. Uh, the weather's starting to clear up, so let's have a little peek at what's going on behind the plastic. It looks like it has survived and I've gotten extremely lucky here. And I can't tell if these are uh, scuff spots or dry water spots in some of these areas. Uh, but it looks like it, it survived. Like I say, it got lucky. Uh, probably if there's anything, a uh, little polish won't, won't fix.
Okay, guys, got a little technical problem. You guys probably can't see it. Can't get the camera to pick it up, but there's kind of like a little little texture going on here. I'm thinking uh, that came right out of the sealer coat. Probably uh, too much air pressure or too close to the panel. So I'm going to let this dry out for like an hour. And then I'll scuff it with uh, some 2000. And then spray another coat on. Huh. Second coat of base down after the big sand job. Nice and flat. No funky pimply stuff going on. So yeah, something happened in the sealer coat. Uh, can't put my finger on it, but back on track. One more coat base on the top side here, and we'll hit some clear. Okay guys, pretty much off the gun finish. Two wet coats of clear. I quit doing the three coats. Three coats, this clear is not a three coat clear, I don't think. Two coats, uh, more than satisfactory. I'm really liking it. Uh, I'm going to shut the lights off, have a cold refreshment, hit the shower, I'll let this cure up. Um, the reason I shut the lights off is... Uh, Keeps the flies and the bees out of the garage so they don't land in it. Alright guys, next morning here. Still pretty glossy. Not too bad overall. Uh, there are a couple spots in the bodywork that uh, could have been better. This little spot down here. There's a little something going on right there overall. Not too bad for uh, how this door started out. If you watch that video, there was like four or five big spots here in the middle and I had to pull dance with the pin welder and whatnot. So this is cured up. I'm going to see about getting it mounted back on the door and then uh, I'll wrap up this video. Yep, got the door mounted. Glass in, seals are in. I need to get some uh, new seals to replace these ones uh, down the road. Uh, but uh, yeah, back's done, post done, door done, rocker's done on this side. And uh, you know, I can't stress enough that I painted this door in that dirty, filthy garage with no fan. And just a little bit of water on the floor so get busy do the other side I'm not going to show you that because it's just the same thing over again I try not to do those kind of videos so till the next one guys as always peace